A ceasefire will not fundamentally solve the problem because whenever the ceasefire is achieved, all we will have ended up with is more dead Palestinians and Israelis, but a situation that is untenable at the end of the day because Palestinians will continue to be an occupied people living under Israeli control. It is simply unsustainable. These things do not go together, that you can have oppression and inequality and also expect that there will be calm and stability. The only way we're going to achieve long-term peace is through justice. It is a sad reality that people tend to pay attention when there is massive violence unfolding, but never when you have the quiet violence of Israeli occupation as a status quo that Palestinians are living under. There is a huge shift in public opinion. A majority of Democrats, up to 64%, favor reducing military aid to Israel because of Israel's violations against Palestinian rights. That is somewhat unprecedented. We have not seen this in previous assaults. You have, you know, Rashida Tlaib. We must condition aid to Israel on compliance with international human rights and end the apartheid. And Ilhan Omar. It is a conflict where one country, funded and supported by the United States government, continues an illegal military occupation over another group of people and AOC. This is our business because we are playing a role in it. And the United States must acknowledge its role in the injustice and human rights violations of Palestinians. And Jamal Bowman and, and so many people who are willing to speak up for Palestinian rights in a way that was never the case before. And you have even Congresswoman Betty McCollum putting forth a bill, the Palestinian Children and Families Act, that wants to make sure that American money is not used by Israel to violate Palestinian rights. For 45 years, Israel has been enforcing a brutal military occupation in the West Bank that has terrorized Palestinian families. Israel's occupation must end. You have senators like Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren who are talking about the importance of accountability for Israel. And when you have the United States of America, Ali, putting almost $4 billion a year into Israel. We have the right to demand that they respect the human rights of all people, including the Palestinians. There is now an understanding, given the shift in public opinion on the Democratic side, that we can now speak in defense of Palestinian human rights to be consistent in our calls to, to an equitable and better foreign policy. We see that so many celebrities are now also speaking out in defense of Palestinian rights and demanding a different kind of foreign policy. So that is what is new about it. And unfortunately, the Biden administration is really behind the times on this. The single largest burden here, of course, falls on the United States. It gives Israel more than $3.8 billion every single year. That is the largest aid package, military aid package given to any country. And then you also have the US using its veto at the UN Security Council more than 40 times to shield Israel from international accountability. That is just inexcusable and it's beyond simply enabling what Israel does. It essentially makes the United States complicit in what Israel is doing to provide this level of aid and protection for these policies. And we are endorsing and enabling and amplifying the violence that Israel is imposing on Palestinians.